<laughs> yeah, I liked doing the old uh, YouTube thumbnail trick of being expressive, even though, like, I don't like doing that. Clickbait stuff, whatever. Something like. Anyway, hey gang, we're live, pal. So, <laughs> hey guys, Andy here. And I'm chilling yet again at uh, McDonald's, freaking McDonald's. Um, just because they have probably the best Wi Fi out here, around here. Um, and I needed some lunch, so what you gonna do? Uh, I know, I shouldn't do it. <laughs> it's bad for my wallet and my fucking Wi Fi connection. Should be good, I think. Yeah, it's good. Uh, weird. There are a lot of people here, so maybe there's a lot of people on Wi-Fi. I don't know. But anyway, it's usually good. <laughs> so, in any event, I've already talked like a minute about not the thing I wanted to talk about. So, I probably lost, like, everybody. But anyway, um, so I wanted to give you guys a little update on what's going on with me as far as the whole demonetization situation. As well as just kind of give you guys an idea of why I want to go to Japan so damn much. Uh, so, first up, the demonetization update. Um, I emailed uh, YouTube creators on, or not an email, but like, I got in contact with YouTube creators on uh, Twitter. It's kind of ironic that you have to talk to YouTube people on something that's not their own platform. But such is life. Anyway, so I got a hold of the uh, YT creators on Twitter told them my situation they're like yeah just uh, email you know creator support uh, they gave me the link to everything and you know sent them an email said basically the same thing you know hey you know in, in kinder words of course but you know basically like fuck why'd you demonetize my channel due to duplicate content um, I just want to know like if there's any like video or videos that you know possibly is what you know got my channel flagged um i just want to know so that way i can correct that so when i reapply for monetization in a month you know they're not just gonna deny me again <laughs> because i didn't correct anything because i didn't know what to correct so uh sent them an email and got an auto response back within maybe a couple minutes or so like 20 minutes or whatever saying basically that because I'm no longer a partner, I don't qualify to be answered by email, which is like, the hell, you know? YouTube creators on their own, like, official Twitter page told me specifically to email them, and they send back this auto-response thing saying, well, we demonetized your channel, so you're no longer a partner, so fuck you. You don't get any of that sweet ad money, and you don't get to talk to us. Because we don't want to associate ourselves with non-partners. Uh. If you guys are wondering, it's just water. Well, mostly ice at this point. Uh, it's not bad, though. But anyway, I was kind of upset about that. Went to Twitter to talk to YouTube creators again about the situation. Like, you guys told me to email. I did exactly what you said, and I got an auto spot saying, you know, uh, we don't... We don't answer to uh, non-partner people. We don't answer to peons. Mm. So, uh, they sent me back another little thing saying, Oh, we'll, you know, we'll have the YouTube creator team send you an email talking about something or other. We'll investigate this matter further. You know, PC, blah, blah, whatever. Um, so, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because, you know, YouTube is a big site. It's got a lot of moving parts, a lot of creators on the site, and, uh, you know, <laughs> and far be it for me to point out the obvious, but, you know, the system isn't the best, but, again, giving them the benefit of the doubt because a lot of moving parts, and uh, they're still figuring it out with the machine learning and all that kind of crap, so, it is what it is, um, so... Just gonna wait for that uh, that email to come back, and then we'll uh, kind of move forward from there. Um, which is weird, cause it's like any of the videos that I think might have got flagged are all unlisted. So if they want me to like just straight up delete them or something, you know, gotta do what I gotta do, I guess. But uh, 
you know, I was looking around online to see if anybody else got demonetized recently, and I saw a couple people, most notably uh, the Japan channel Dcom or dot com. You know the hey guys, that guy. <laughs> Um, it shows off various little clips of Japan and whatnot. Um, his channel got demonetized for exactly the same thing. Duplicate content. So, again, my guess is, you know, it's just a bot flagging stuff uh, without context or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, so. Um, hopefully it's just uh, just a little quirk in the system and YouTube can, you know, smooth that all out uh, very soon. Hopefully, because, you know, I, I do want to get back to making my own videos. Um, as much as I like making uh, videos for other people, um, I do like making my own stuff as well. And i uh, got a lot of ideas for uh, video editing tutorials as well as, you know, just life stuff on here. Um, I do like the, uh, the whole live stream aspect because, you know, I get to interact with you guys in real time uh, when you're around. <laughs> Uh, but also, just so I don't have to edit all the ums and the ahs and the awkward pauses and all that kind of stuff. It's real. It's raw, man. And it's uh, it's less work for me. So you get more you get more videos without having to wait for me to, you know, cut out all the ums and ahs and you knows and you know, uh, color treat and whatever else. You know, put in little music in the background, stuff like that. So, you know. But anyway, that's that's what's going on with the whole demonetization situation as it stands right now. Um, as I get more updates from the YouTube side, I'll be sure to you know post that out to you guys so you kind of know what's what's going on as it happens. Uh, so let's move on to uh, the whole Japan situation. So uh, I talked about this with you guys uh, a little bit ago, a couple several updates. You know, I've been talking about this and. Uh, you know, the main thing is I do want to go back to Japan. Um, I've been pushing for it pretty hard lately. Um, been in contact with a couple schools out there that uh, support the GI Bill and BAH and all that kind of stuff. See, the tricky thing with going to school on the GI Bill is that if you're going to a non-American university, they have a set cap of what they can pay. And I think it's like... 21 or 25,000 a year which I mean sounds pretty decent if you're going to like a public university but uh, you know also BAH kind of varies I think they have a fixed amount for that as well I'm not sure but you know there, there's just too many uh, variables and stuff like that in dealing with uh, going to school at a foreign university which is why I didn't apply to like Sophia or uh, like any of the other uh, universities out in Tokyo. So I reached out to both Lakeland University and of course everybody's favorite Temple University. <laughs> Which I know, I know, I've heard a lot of horror stories about Temple. Um, not a lot of stuff about Lakeland actually. Um, one of my friends, Jim, uh, you might know him online as uh, Kid Shoryuken. Uh, he's a fellow vet like myself, and he went out to Lakeland University, then eventually transferred out to Temple, where he's at right now, I think. Or he might be finishing up, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, anyway, in any event, he went out to, uh, to Lakeland, and he said, you know, it's fine. You know, it's kind of like either a community college or like a... Like a was it like a low rent uh, public school as far as you know the vibe and you know the cost especially because you know for a lot of people temple is a little costly <laughs> um, but for me that's not really much of an issue but for others it is um, <laughs> hashtag humble brag but uh, you know I was looking at the different um, you know pros and cons and stuff about each university um, temple would be my obvious choice because um, you know I have a, several friends that go out there several vet friends several non vet friends and you know they have kind of mixed mixed bag about it you know some of them don't really like the school at all or maybe there's a couple uh, classes or whatever that 
they didn't particularly like, mostly because of the teachers. So it's kind of like any other college, really. <laughs> like, your mileage will vary, you know. So that's why it's kind of hard to um, really look at, uh, like, college reviews because it's all predicated on the teachers, the classes, and just the person's own uh, personality, how they do things, stuff like that. So, you know, you might see a review saying, oh, this is the worst school ever because of XYZ. And it's like, well, I'm not going into that, that program or that major. <laughs> so, like, I don't give a shit about X, Y, and Z. Or, you know, I'm just going to pick a different teacher for this class, you know? So... It kind of helps you in that way, but, yeah, it's just a man event. Um, you know, I was looking at, you know, kind of Lakeland versus uh, Temple, and uh, there's not a lot of info out there about Lakeland, really, especially compared to Temple. Like, pretty much everybody and their brother has gone to Temple at some point. And, uh, you know, it is a, uh, a GI Bill friendly school. There's a lot of veterans actually who want to study abroad and they go out to Temple because, you know, it's an American school. So, you know, they would use their GI Bill as if they were going to the main campus in, I believe it's Boston or thereabouts. Um, but, you know, it wouldn't, you know, at least on paper, it wouldn't be any different than going to an American university. Um, so that's my main draw to places like Temple and Lakeland is that I can use my GI Bill as if I were going to their main campus, BH included. Um, and the whole, the whole, uh, class experience is in English. Um, not to say, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't want to learn Japanese, but like, <laughs> you know, I just want to have, um, I just want to go to school with as little hassle as possible and uh, once I'm you know done for the day done with class and stuff then I can go out on my own and learn Japanese talk with Japanese people and do all that fun stuff you know because I figure at school I'm there to learn my thing and then uh, once I'm out and about in town then I can study Japanese on my own but they do have some Japanese courses that thinking about taking maybe as electives if anything i think both lakeland and uh temple have them so it's no big deal um but the main reason i want to go to temple over lakeland is the main advantage that temple has over lakeland is the bah now at the time of this live stream 2018 um the BAH for Lakeland is $1,200, which is a good amount of money, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's definitely very doable, you know, if you're living out in, uh, in Tokyo. It doesn't sound like a lot, and you may think, well, Tokyo is like one of the most expensive cities in the world. How can you afford to live out there with $1,200? Well, the thing is, yes, Tokyo is expensive, but... There's a lot of really small student apartments, and dorms, and guest houses, and there's a lot of housing options out in Tokyo. So you can live in something that's very lavish, or you can kind of, you know, live a more Spartan lifestyle for less rent. You know, I can get a, a pretty okay, like one bedroom studio apartment for about equivalent of maybe five or six hundred dollars USD uh, or I can even go cheaper than that if I go to like a guest house or you know one of them uh, like Leo Palace or something like that or like a dormitory or whatever so you can even get cheaper and you can also get like some of them furnished as well so you don't have to go out and buy uh, <clears throat> furniture or appliances or any of that other stuff so that lowers the expense even more because um, also you know in Japan you got to worry about how to you know <laughs> put it into the apartment and, and a lot of uh, places have like uh, delivery service or uh, delivery slash installation service but you know 
Uh, it all depends on that particular place. Some of them may charge a little extra, some may charge a lot extra. Um, you also gotta worry about, you know, the conditions of release, and you know, heaven forbid if you decide to move, like you gotta have the movers, you know, take it to whatever your next apartment is, or house, or whatever the situation is. Uh, so it makes it more difficult to leave, whereas the furnished places, you know, once your lease is up, you know, you pay, uh, like, the last little bit of, like, cleanup tax or whatever if need be, and, uh, you're kind of going on your merry little way. Um, so, that's kind of nice. Uh, and also, because Tokyo is so dense, like, really, you don't need a car, out there. I mean, if you would need a vehicle, probably like uh, like a scooter, moped, motorcycle. That's about it, really. And uh, you're not really going to be going like so fast in the city. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but for me, um, I don't think I'll need something like that. Uh, you know, even because uh, you know, I really love the the train system. It's you know, really nice. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, paying attention. <laughs> Unless it's, you know, getting on the next train or getting off. That's about it. And, you know, I've I've done that, like, drunk so many times uh, when I was out in Japan the first time. Which I wouldn't recommend doing if you're in the service. But, uh, yeah, is what it is. Have a chew high or two or three or four, maybe. And, uh... It's like, oh shit, look at the time. I gotta hop on the last train to Yokosuka. So, uh, you know. <laughs> but, eh, you know. One of the bad things about getting older is you can't do the things you used to be able to do when you were younger. You know, like drinking. So, I can't even drink that much if I wanted to, I don't think. Uh, I tried doing that here in the States, and my stomach would just be so upset. And just like, ah, fuck. Getting too old for this shit. But I digress. So... Yeah, because uh, Tokyo is so dense. Um, and, and for me, again, this is just, you know, my own needs. Your your mileage may vary, your needs may vary. But for me, I don't really need a motorized vehicle, whether it's a car, a moped, whatever, to get around Tokyo. Um, I might invest in a bicycle out there, if anything, you know, for the short trips, depending on where my apartment's at relative to the school um you know it's something that i did when i was stationed out in yokosuka because i spent a lot of money just on uh you know travel to and from work which really wasn't that far from my apartment and it ended up taking me longer to get to work um using the train and stuff so i thought it was best just to get a bicycle and uh you know just bike to work and it ended up saving like so much money like for real you know i saved i ended up recouping the cost of the bike because i spent about 300 dollars on it which is a decent amount for a bicycle <laughs> i think um just depends on what your needs are for it but for me i think that's that's a little much um unless it's like a racing bike and it's like carbon fiber frame and all this other shit but mine wasn't that it was just a mountain bike so but in any event i ended up recouping the the costs of the bike from not taking the train back and forth to work you know i would only take it if we were getting underway or something like that because i didn't want to leave my bike on the bike rack to rust over from the seawater or to get stolen or whatever the case uh, those are the only times i didn't uh bike to work you know but normal day-to-day -day stuff yeah i'd totally bicycle to work so i figure i'd do the same thing uh while i'm out and about in college you know just get a bike <clears throat> you know, preferably a mountain bike. I don't know if I want to go for like a mamachari, which is uh, kind of, you know, they call it like a grandma bike or a mom bike or something like that. Uh, but it's basically kind of looks like one of those uh, like town bikes. It's basically what it is. Um, I just want something with a little bit more uh, oomph to it. Um, and plus it'll be easier to spot, <laughs> you know, in the bike rack when I'm looking for my shit. So, you know. That mama chai, mama chai, mama chai, mountain bike. Yep, that's mine. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but in any event, uh, as far as 
No, oh, yeah, I was. I kind of went off on a tangent there, didn't I? I do that. <laughs> but uh, as far as you know, the main advantages and disadvantages between Lakeland and Temple. Uh, Lakeland is more open to um, admitting me because of my low grades than Temple is. So I think that if I were to apply to Temple right now, I might not get in because, um, as you guys know, I didn't do so hot in college last time I was in. Um, There's several factors with it. You know, we could go on about them. You know, it could be whether it's just me readjusting to American life, civilian life, college life. That whole adjustment period was pretty rough. Um, it could also, <clears throat> you know, just be that I didn't really have uh, a strong local support network. You know, when I was when I was up in Kalamazoo, I had like nobody at first. You know, I had I had work friends and stuff, but you know, I I just I let the age gap really get to me, and you know that was on me. You know that wasn't. You know my friends were like totally okay with it. They didn't seem to be bothered, uh, but it did bother me. So I was kind of you know kept them at a distance, and because they're work friends, I don't want them. You know, to accidentally say something, which I'm sure they wouldn't, but you never know. Shit happens. <laughs> um, and I just, you know, I was going through a lot. And I had a lot of uh, personal development I had to get through in order to... <laughs> Sorry for the reconnect thing. Nothing against Kalamazoo or that area in Michigan. Uh, it just wasn't for me. Um, I really did try to make it work out there. You know, I didn't want to come back to my folks place after a semester or even a year and just be like oh, I can't do this no more you know I really tried to make it work out there and you know I transferred from uh, the university out there to the community college which the community college to be fair was a lot better you know the programs were more up my alley as far as what I want to do but I was just so hung up on the environment that I'm just like eh, I'm just done so, um, when the opportunity to come back to Ohio presented itself, um, I took it. So, at the end of 2017, got out of college, um, and decided to take a break this year just to kind of figure out what I want to do, you know, because do I really want to go to college? And if I do want to go to college, I want to make like a serious, um, attempt at it, you know? And I feel like putting myself in the right environment is the way to go. You know, I can't just go to any old college and be like, yeah, I'll get my paper and burr. Because, you know, I thought about doing that here, just taking a couple classes, if anything, to, to raise my GPA. But, you know, really, I only have so much time on the GI Bill. And, uh, you know, I got to focus on that degree. And it has to be in the right environment with the right support network. And I feel that, you know, Japan, specifically Tokyo, is it. You know, it's it's the most foreign-friendly uh, city in Japan. Um, but anyway, you could say, you know, other places like uh, Osaka, Kobe, Fukuoka, uh, Kyoto, stuff like that. You know, and there's certainly... They have foreign, foreign friendly signs and stuff like that. And Japan as a whole at least has, like, uh, you know, English for some signs and things like that. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's mostly just the, uh, the environment. You know, I, th I felt that while I was out there, I was definitely at my uh, my creative peak my most like inspired to make stuff was out when I was out in Japan but looking back at the videos I didn't put a whole lot of effort into the production value of them which was on me really you know it's just that I felt I, I had that uh, that old school youtuber mentality of you know if you build it they will come and you know just showing off basically raw footage of Japan instead of getting a whole bunch of b-roll and putting it all together and stuff like that um, but knowing what I know now about editing uh, I really want to have another go at it and uh, make some better videos for you guys and you know for me as well <laughs>
a little bit of selfishness there, I guess. But I definitely do want to expand on my craft as far as making the videos I used to make, uh, but better, obviously. And, uh, you know, all my, uh, all my video editing clients are out in uh, the Tokyo-ish area. So I figure being able to work with them more directly will allow me to be more helpful to them, you know, instead of just being an editor in America, putting together their stuff. You know, I can be with them as they're filming stuff, be, if anything, like a second cameraman. You know, I can do, like, B-roll shots and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's always good to have an extra extra set of hands, if anything. Um, and also, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the collab opportunities are uh, a lot more plentiful out in Tokyo versus Wapak, Ohio. <laughs> Um, or even in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So that's another thing, you know, I really miss, I miss that, that community that was out there, you know, the video creating community out in Tokyo, you know, J vloggers, whatever you want to call them. Um, I think that label's kind of obsolete now just cause there's so many different people out there and they're creating so many different types of, of content. It's not just, you know, hey, look, it's Japan. You know, you got, like, uh, Japanese, like, food channels. You have, fuck, you even have, like, Gachapon, you know, the little, um, fucking, the little capsule toys. You know, you even got your own channel for that. You know, you got fashion. Um, I already said food. Um. And of course, you do have like little travel channel esque J vlog sort of things, um, but <clears throat> you know, it, it's definitely branched out beyond just being a J vlogger. Um, and you know, the environment's changed. You know, that's all there is to it. And you know, I've changed, and I just want to get back to that that period of growth that I had from 2013 2015. I, I felt like I was just at my at my best because I always had something. I had like a a system and a groove down because I would always, um, even during the week, because I wouldn't really go out and make stuff during the week. I would usually save that time for editing. But on weekends or you know if I didn't have duty or something like that, um, I would go out to different parts of either Yokosuka or Yokohama or other parts in Kanagawa or. Uh, you know, the little spots in uh, in Tokyo. You know, obviously hit up the uh, the touristy spots first. If anything, for some uh, for some views and whatnot. But uh, also hit up some pretty obscure spots in Kanagawa as well. You know, like the uh, the map, the Commodore Perry Museum out in Kurihama. Um, you know, I went down to friggin' Jogoshima, which is the, um, at the lower part of the Kanagawa, uh, the Mura Peninsula, which is where Kanagawa is mostly located on. Um, <clears throat> you know, I went out there, and, uh, you know, again, knowing what I know now about video making and, you know, the people that I've met throughout my time there, you know, there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of new people to meet as well. And also working with the people that I know, uh, helping them make videos as well. Um, I just feel like Japan is the place for me to grow to the next level of, you know, YouTube creator, filmmaker, whatever you want to call me. YouTuber, I guess. I don't freaking know. But, uh, <clears throat> I just feel like it's the, uh, the next logical step and I was also looking at going to other places here in America like LA uh, I thought about New York briefly but eh, I'm not a big fan of snow <laughs> I'm sorry um, but you know LA is just ginormous and it's very spread out so it's not like Tokyo where yes it's ginormous but it's very dense so you can just stay within a block of where you're at and you know you'll never be bored you'll always have something to do or see or eat or something it's just it's so densely packed 
you know, and uh, I really miss it a lot, and that's why I want to go back, you know, but uh, that's all I got to say about the war in Vietnam, we're at like over 30 minutes with this thing now, and my phone is like, you know, burning the skin off my hands, because <laughs> it's so hot, um, but yeah, man, you know, at the end of the day, I just miss being out there, I miss the people, um, I want to experience more growth, not just as a person, but also as a filmmaker. And I just need to be in the right environment to make that happen, you know. Um, there's only so much stuff I can do in here. And, you know, I, you know, I like being in a place where I'm constantly inspired to make something or go to some little hole-in-the-wall place and make a video of it, you know not really much opportunity for that out here um yeah you just gotta go where you're inspired and that's what i want to do um but the uh the main uh not really caveat but i guess caveat but like the main thing that's kind of holding me up from going back to japan right now is uh the upfront cost um as you guys know the gi bill does pay for tuition books housing all that stuff but it only starts like at the end of the first month that you're going so you know I need to have money saved up in order to you know afford living expenses travel at first um, and just any other little miscellaneous thing there might be like some kind of random fee or something like that that I'm not really thinking of that I gotta have money saved up for and also, and most importantly, the plane ticket money. Because being out here in the Midwest, in America, uh, in Ohio, uh, <laughs> it costs a lot of money to travel to Japan. You know, even just a, uh, even just a one-way tickets, you know, I've seen them on average about $1,000. Um, I think the lowest I've ever seen it was like $770. That's just for a one-way. And I had to book that like six months in advance to get that price. Um, so it is definitely a lot of upfront stuff. But once the GI Bill, um, I feel, you know, once I get out there and the GI Bill kicks in and I start getting some more uh, freelance work as well as doing some side hustle stuff, you know, teaching English or whatever the case may be, um, I think we'll be able to. Uh, to really uh, kick things off um, but you know pros and cons of Lakeland versus Temple at least for me right now is that I think Lakeland would accept me a lot easier than Temple would um, but uh, Lakeland's BH is much lower than Temple's and Temple has a dorm that you can stay at where there's like no upfront cost um, you know, you can stay there for the first semester, and then afterwards you have to find your own place out in town. Uh, but <clears throat> that's fine. Uh, in any event, um, but with Lakeland, you have to, uh, they have deals with dormitories around the area. I don't really know what that means <laughs> as far as prices go. They could be cheaper than, uh, than Temple, but um, I just think that Temple overall would be the better fit for me. But should Temple not accept my ow, the steering wheel's kind of out. But anyway, should Temple not accept my application, then I will apply to uh, to Lakeland. You know, if anything, just as an in, and then uh, once I get my grades up and everything, I can just transfer transfer over to Temple and get the higher BH and all that stuff. So, in any event, it's definitely going to take some time to uh, to save up for all that. Um, I've estimated it at about. Twenty-five hundred or three thousand dollars starting out, so it's it's a lot of money. Um, so I'm, you know, definitely looking for ways to uh, to raise that money. Um, looking for a new job, actually, um, because uh, you know <laughs> my current IRL job isn't exactly allowing me to save up. It gives me enough to get by, you know, pay rent and other little expenses and stuff like that. And then my freelance money kind of helps cover the difference and save up a little bit but I'm not saving up as fast as I should be so uh, 
definitely want to get another job, one that's uh, a little less stressful than the one I have now, and uh, allow me to work more hours, because that's the main thing. The job I'm working at right now is extremely stressful, and it's really increasing my anxiety, so I can easily get more hours at the job I'm working at now, but the way my anxiety is right now, it just... Uh, you know, it's just not really doable, and uh, it it sucks for me to say that because I'm I feel like I'm such a hard worker, and you know if I was ever in like a money pinch or something like that, I would always ask ask my boss or manager or whoever you know, hey, you need me to come in on this day for a shift or something like that. You know, I would I would always want to pick up shifts if I was a little low on money, but this job is is too much for me, you know. <laughs> Um, I just need a need a job that's a little, a little less stressful, and uh, you know that way I can pick up more hours and stuff if need be, and uh, not be too stressed out. And also, more importantly, save up money faster. Cause that's the main thing. Um, and then also, with freelancing and stuff, um, I am looking for more clients, but I'm not looking super hard just because. You know, it does take time to, to make videos and, you know, a lot of the clients out there, at least locally anyway, don't want to pay a higher price tag for the videos that I want to put out for them. So it's hard to justify um, investing that much time for a low payout. So, um, kind of is what it is, but, uh, you know, that's why I'm looking for you know, better IRL job. I'm looking at improving the clients that I do have, improving their videos, and uh, you know, getting their numbers up and stuff. Because you know, I don't want to charge them out the ass. Because um, it's not really fair to them. <laughs> you know, if I'm raking in all the money and they're not getting enough from ad revenue or sponsors or whatever. Um, thought it was hard to be. Anyway, um, so that's basically what uh, what I've been up to. Uh, this is almost like a an October 2018 update video in and of itself. But uh, I am going to put out a proper October 2018 video update video um, in a couple days. Um, it'll be a more condensed version of this. Maybe by then I'll get some more updates on the whole uh, demonetization situation. Um, stuff like that so anyway thank you guys for tuning in this video uh, i know it's like super duper fucking long but anyway with that said this is the andy sign sign up for now and as always we'll see you next time catch you later guys bye